we're going to use fetching just because I'm not, I don't completely have my act together. I love fetching, of course. Everybody loves fetching, I think. Uh, one of the great draftsmen, I think. But um, I don't have a lot of reference that I can sit uh, to the side here. I didn't have time to dig out what little I've got. So we're going to work from books, uh, which is something we'll probably do quite a bit. Um, so we'll just work from him. So I want to talk about the structure of the eye, of course. Eyes. So let's see what I'm doing up there. And I'm going to tip this down a little bit, the computer, so I can see it in the glaring studio lights. So eyes. And I want to start simple. This is a big topic. Uh, for some, the most difficult part of the whole body, which is difficult in itself. So there's a lot of uh, parameters to it. So we're going to take it very simply. It doesn't do us any good to draw all these little body parts, even if they're wonderful body parts, say the eyes, if we don't get it to fit on the bigger structure. So we've got to figure out how those eyes go on the bigger structure and with a better solution than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and think of the eyes as simple as possible. Big simple shapes. The big, biggest and simplest. So before I do the eyes I want a little bit of the structure of the whole head. Structure the whole head, structure of each eye, and there's a lot of little structures inside the eyeball and the lids and all that kind of stuff. And we'll get into that eventually. Not a lot today, but a little bit today. So first I want to talk about something that um, I was actually talking with my uh, clients in my coaching program about just a few minutes ago. We were looking at the knee, and if you look at a knee, you've got the kneecap, and I'm just going to make things boxy because it's easier to see. You've got a kneecap, and that little kneecap is sitting on a bigger knee bone, the tibia and the femur and or the femur. And then sometimes that bone is sitting on the bigger, wider muscle forms of the quadriceps. So you'll have the quadriceps come down here, and they'll funnel in, and they'll come like from, from around the side to the front and from the outside towards the center. So we'll have something like this. Like so. And we'll notice that all of this stuff here comes down and in. And all this stuff here is in front of and inside of all the rest of it. And the kneecap with its tendinous and ligament connections, those will also be in front of. And then that inner structure might be in front of the outer structure. Notice wider and behind, wider and behind, narrower in front. And if we think of that in box logic, then we could say all the side planes of all the biggest shapes and all the smallest shapes, all those side planes get darker. And if it turns a little bit to the side, it gets a little darker. If it turns way to the side, it gets way darker. And that's a box logic. And if we add the gradation, we can round them off, the, the half tones round those boxes, so they're more tubular or more egg-like, but it's the same, same thinking throughout. So we're going to use that for the head. And you'll notice if you look at the nose here, it's in front and it's in the center. And then we step back to the eyeballs and they're in the front, but quite a bit wider. And then we check, step, back, uh, step back to the cheekbones, and they're towards the outside, and wider yet. And then we step back to the hairstyle, and it's way outside and way back, or significantly back. 
and we can see that. You can't see this other one over here, but we're going to have that stepping. So let's look at that real quick. Before I get into the beautiful contours of the lids, the beautiful shaded dark and the luminous uh, life light, as they call it, highlight in the, pu in the wet pupil, uh, before we get into all that beautiful nuance stuff, the hair of the brow and wrinkles of the flesh, we want that understanding of what's in front and what's in center and what's moving to the outside and stepping back very much if you know the uh, South American pyramids or, or step pyramids are called ziggurats. Box logic. As it goes out to a wider base, it's more stable. It gets wider and farther back. And as we move up towards the center, we do exactly that. We move in and up to the closer, if we're looking at it from this direction, closer center. And we're gonna see the eye do that in the little structures and the big structures. So let's look at the big structures first. So let's take a look at this. And with the time we have, I'm gonna do a sloppy or fairly sloppy job. And notice I'm qualifying that I'm gonna do a lousy job. It takes the pressure off me and uh, makes me look really good to all you people. But the reason I do that is not to I was going to say not to massage and protect my ego, but that's probably not true. But I'm taking the pressure off myself. It's just a sketch. And I'm going to take my time. And if I had more time, it might be a more refined and maybe even a more well-designed sketch. So I'm setting myself up for the fact that it might not be as good as I could get it, which is could be a way of psyching myself out but also it's a way of protecting me so I don't get radically discouraged, wildly discouraged. So let's uh, do this. So I'm protecting that kind of vulnerable creative side. I don't want to screw up. If I keep screwing up, I may not ever want to do this again, especially in front of a lot of people. So I'm going to think of things as just a sketch. And I've mentioned this to some of you before outside this door over here. I'm pointing to it and you can't see me. But outside this door this way from my studio, out here, I got an 8 by 10 foot painting. I approached and there was eight figures. I had had another one where there was 70, 65, 75 figures. I don't even remember. Uh, and, I can, and it was the same size. Every figure was about this size. It got a little bigger, a little smaller, but they're two or three feet tall. It was just a sketch. Don't want to psych myself out. So what I want to feel is a little bit of the placement of these things. And uh, by way of uh, patting my ego here a little bit, protecting my, my gentle creative soul, a little child who wants to come out and play and not be shamed or embarrassed as he was, as we all were, throughout school, or oftentimes to some degree or another, in some class or another. Um, fetching would take uh, three days, four days a week on some of these things, really. And they're just, just ahead, you know, just ahead. But he took his time, giving himself the best chance for success. So I'm going to rush it a little bit because we're on a clock. So I'm just going to lay some of this kind of constructed stuff out. And I can do it any way I want. I like that T, as we talked about. The L, we don't see very much of. The other L, remember the LTL, those of you who've been with me for a while, would be to the ear. And we're slightly, the head's lifted up. Again, I'm lifting my head like you can see me. Head's lifted up just a little bit, her chin's up and a little forward. I'm just going to ease into that truth. And I'll draw a lot of lines so I don't have to commit to any one line. And we can't see her ear, but I'm going to imagine I could. Because I want to feel like I'm Drawing a head with the chin just swinging forward just a little bit. 
and wherever that eyebrow line is and wherever that socket is I want to feel like the ears are a little lower, that we're a little underneath. That L, T, L. That gives me the three dimensions I need to place anything in position. So we do that. Now, notice what's happening here. Let's see, I don't have, I'll do this. I'm going to use, this is a Conte of Paris. This is just um, smooth Strath, Strathmore Bristol. Give me a second, I'll show you. That's what I drew these on. I've posted these a few times. Uh, Conte, charcoal, I used some, uh, a little bit of red Conte in it. And what I can do is I can take also alpha color, and now I can draw really lightly here. So what I wanna visualize is the nose the front of the nose, front plane, and the side, in this case, the kind of side corners. The nose gets wider as it comes down to the cheek. Then there's a little bit of cheek, front of the face. front of the face. Here we'd go down, step down over the nostrils, step down over the nostrils, then front of the cheek, and then side of the cheek. Front of the cheek, side of the cheek, somewhere in there. We'd know exactly later on. Now it could well round down, but I'm going to think of front and sides like a box. And if you notice, you'll see the tones tend to hug those corners of the box. This is all relatively darker, relatively darker outside. But every time it turns down, or to the sides, it gets darker. Every time it turns up, or to the center, it gets lighter. When I run out of pigment, let me take that, let me make that a little bit darker now. Now I'm gonna do my ziggurat. Stepping down, and this is bumping up, but we could ignore that. We could just go right across it to make it simple. We get the cheek, inside of the cheek, and now it's going to step down to the outside of the eyeball. And then it's going to go out again. And it's going to step to the outside of the face, straight across, down, off the eyeball, onto the cheek, off the front of the cheek to the side of the cheek, off the side of the cheek to the front of the hair, or hat, probably that hat, it's probably a hat at that point, and then maybe the side of the hat, and then space behind. Dropping down, and you can do endless subtleties. As I said, we can bump up over the eyeball. We'll look at that another time. But I want that stepping down. 
The side planes are going to be a little darker. A little darker. A little darker. Front planes are going to be a little lighter. And if we tip that up, we'd see that stepping of the nose to the boxy structure of the eye. Imagine we were carving this out of wood. We'd carve all the way back to the the um, bump of the lid that's closest to us, but not as close as the nose. And we'd step back over both eyes, a little or a lot, whatever is appropriate. Step back to the cheekbone. I'm going to touch my cheek skin, you can't see it. It's back a little or a lot behind that. And then we'll step back to the hair. Maybe that's way behind, tucked behind the ear. Could be asymmetrical on one side, it's tucked behind the ear on one side, it's left up framing the face on the other or something. But you can see that stepping out, ziggurat. Ziggurat. We want to look for that. You can see it on the abdomen, you can see it from the chest, the pecs to the shoulders. Inside is forward, outside is farther back. And the farther we go outside, Farther we go back, not every time, but often. So we'll look for it that way. Now, the other thing we want to do is then look at these beautiful lids. And one of the reasons I picked this, and he tends to do this with a lot of his, let's dust this way back now. They're beautifully fluid. Look how curvilinear the lids are. Now we'll look at the structure another day, but let's just look at this for a second. We've got something like this, this beautiful lid, just going its own way. And she has these kind of uh, slightly mournful expression. Maybe she's bored from posing for four or five days straight, just a damn head drawing. But in any case, it's, it's uh, this watery wash. And if we look over here, this is unique itself. Watery wash, it does its own watery wash, doing whatever it's doing. It would be very easy to draw those things. One is different than another. This one's looking to the outside. This one's looking to the inside. It's throwing a symmetry in there. But I want to come back to the symmetry. These construction lines that ended up being the basis of the step pyramid idea. I'm going to come back to that. And if I can, when I can, Let's this back a little bit. Let's this back a little bit. I want to find somewhere, maybe it's in the middle, mid area of the upper lid. Right there. I want to feel like an architect right off. Now, there might be a little asymmetry to the eye that I want to show, like my right eye is a little smaller and a little uh, more uh, droopy than the left eye. So we all have some asymmetry. Sometimes you'll see people's ears are out of symmetry, and you may choose to draw that or you may idealize it would be your choice. But I'm going to look for the construction lines and I'll eyeball it without this, but just so you can see that. That wasn't very good, was it? Steve can do better than that. I'm going to look for where it touches, the central area. 
Is there anywhere in there? Well, as I look at it in symmetry, still a little high. As I look at that in symmetry, I realize, well, yeah, that central part also sits pretty horizontal, not at an angle. It actually is here, and then it droops down to the inside, and it droops down to the outside, and it droops down to the outside and it droops down to the inside. And I'll track those things. And I might well track where the, the lacrimal lake, the inside little curl uh, where we gather tears in there to dispose of them, to drain them out of the eye so we can see those cave bears about to get us. Uh, and it has a little kind of, oftentimes a little, Soft tail, like a cartoon tail of a polar bear. Go. But I'll look to see if those line up. And then as I track a few points, doesn't have to be a, punch, a bunch of points, but a few points, then I can freehand the rest, but I'll kind of double check those. And then I'll do my thing in there. And I do it from the, uh, on the top lid and on the bottom lid. Maybe as it gets right under the pupil here, but it's in the outer third, one third, two thirds, three thirds, it gets the lowest point. And if I look over on the other side, it's even farther because that's going, that's eyes turning away from us a little bit. So, but it's close to that third. I'll, I'll check those. And usually just freehand construct, as I said before, and pick out those beautiful little droops. And where it comes up and then bumps for that little tail. And there, I'll look to see if I can't find, and look at that exquisite line, I won't do it justice, but that exquisite line as we transcend from the eyeball into that little lacrimal, lacrimal lake there. And then I would do that with each of these things. So I, I get that stepping out and back, out and back, and in and up, and in and up, in and forward, and track those. And I'll build everything then also off the symmetry of what's over here is in principle, in main, the same as over there. There's a little bit of asymmetry, but I'll weave that in subtly, or not at all, if maybe if I'm idealizing, and work that out. So that's going to be our, our um, kind of model. Make sure we get that big structure that's holding and stacking in, layering like a layer cake, layering in those inner structures. We'll see that all over the place, all throughout the body. We'll do that. It's not that it always does that. We get into the buttocks and the buttocks splits, get that uh, crease there. So sometimes it divots in, the breastbone divots in, but in general, we'll tend to get that out and in and back and forward in progression. And then we'll use a construction line off each layer of our cake or our zig ziggurat, each step. Of, of stone, it's down in South America and Mexico or something, and they, there'll be a symmetry. What I see over here of a cheekbone is over here. What I see of the outer upper lid here is over here. 
uh, to some degree. So that's that. How are we doing on time? <clears throat> Running out. Now, the other thing we want to pay attention, so that's looking at it in front three quarters, but mainly front. Now, when we start to move to a profile, let's find a better profile. It shows what I'm going to show you a little bit more clearly. <clears throat> we'll start to see a different kind of stepping. <clears throat> Excuse me. See, I had one earlier. I forget which one it was. I should have put a little post it to it. Let's see. So let's use this, and uh, you'll notice my um, camera to the paper is askew, so there's a little bit of foreshortening as we drop down. That's because we didn't have all the right clamps, so we're going to order some clamps and get that um, a little more beautifully square so we don't have that distortion. Now, when we look at the eye here, we're going to have, since we're on the clock again, I'll do this. Here's the front of the face. And here's the eyebrow. Here are the eyebrow crease of the upper lid. You can see these beautiful linear lines with his understanding in tow, in his imagination, in the ideal figure that's in his head. We have a hole And hollow there, and then the ball fills it. So notice that ziggurat stepping out for the temple, stepping in for the eyeball, stepping in for the nose, in and forward, in and forward, in and forward. Maybe stepping out for the swell of the temporalis and skull, maybe stepping out again for the hairstyle and so on. Maybe step out again because it's Princess Leia with the, the bun, twin bun hairstyle. So that's going to sit in there. And every time I draw a line and another line behind it, that's an overlap. It's an eclipsing of what is hidden by that thing that's closer to us, going back and back and back. Back and back, back and back, back and back and back. Sure, nice to be drawing on paper again, I gotta tell you. I'm gonna keep it a little more fluid so we're in the spirit of the fetching. In here. Now, what's going to happen, we're going to get a stair step from the forehead brow ridge. It pushes forward to protect the eye. And the cheekbone below it, ridge of bone, that moves both come together in a Y into the zygomatic arch. Flows around the eye to protect it and both come together and flow back towards the ear. And then that ends up being filled with the temporalis muscle, filled with the masseter and some other fatty and deposits and lymphs and lymph nodes and all sorts of good stuff. But now we're going to get the forehead <clears throat> with the eyebrow helping to mark it for us. Not exactly. 
the brow goes down here, the eye or the the uh, bony ridge, brow ridge goes that way. The hair of the eye, and there's not a lot of hair to the uh, Native American uh, eyebrow usually. We'll look at all of these structures carefully another time. But we've got that brow ridge in front, brow ridge in front, eyeball, now with the eyelid. And then the lids, we'll make this very simple. The lids, with all their detail, little crease in there, hair of the ugly lashes, hair of the lid. and the shading. <clears throat> and notice what I did here. I pushed that eyelid back from the brow. And I pushed that <clears throat> pupil and iris back from the lid. Look at the stepping back. Same ziggurratic idea, but now it's flipped upside down. We're not seeing the rest of it's hidden behind that cheekbone, brow ridge. But we're going from the eyebrow to the eyelid to the pupil and iris. <clears throat> and then you can see a little bit of line around that. That's the thickness of the lid over here, wrapping around that eyebrow. We'll see that better in a three-quarter view, but that's in there. But the the dark lid, uh, the dark um, pupil and iris is stepping back from the edge of the eyelid. And I think of it like an awning at a street, Main Street, Old Town maybe in your town, where the awning Shades the window so it can't get hit by meteorites. I guess the awning wouldn't stop that, but it helps with dust and debris. <clears throat> and it shades the sun, so, it's, and it, so it protects it from the heat and all the elements. And then it goes the other way. Now it's stepped in from brow to lid from lid to pupil and iris. Now it's going to go back out to lid. You can see beautiful and those lovely high cheekbones, which tends to be the character, the generic character of this um, racial type. And we'll see some racial types will have different eye structures, different skull shapes, none of that. Uh, this race is smarter than that, that race kind of nonsense, bell curve kind of stuff that was out of a while ago. I don't mean that, but structurally, <clears throat> generally, there'll be cold weather adaptations that will affect the amount of fat, the uh, proportion, the exposure of the features to the harsh elements, as, and uh, likewise in hot, sunny, arid, areas. Different temperature climbs will create subtle differences over very much the same bone structure, but the fatty base and the and same muscle structure, but the fatty deposits and the proportions of the features will vary. So, but this is true for all races to some degree or another. So now we've got that lid covering the ball, so it's like we had an awning over here. <clears throat> and then the cheekbone will swing back and keep curving or stepping back. Or sometimes it'll push forward again, depending on the character, <clears throat> characteristics of whoever you're drawing. So it could bump back out a little bit again for that cheekbone. Because that cheekbone is like the brow ridge, 
wants to push forward like a donut surrounding that embedded ball in the center, kind of like uh, Saturn, see in Saturn where the rings, but it's settled back in, this pushes forward, catches. So sometimes that'll come forward. In this case, it, it swings beautifully back. It does not do that. It'll come back this way for reasons we'll find out another day. So that's the lesson for today. I want to look at a front, a three-quarter, a profile, even a three-quarter rear view uh, oftentimes in the stepping wide and back, stacking forward towards the features, towards the center line or T of the face, and stepping back and then back forward one or two times in each direction. And when we do that, when we place our features in those advantageous positions, it looks realistic. Now, it doesn't particularly look like that person, but it looks well-structured. So we want to pay attention to that step. Where is it? Is it inside or out? Where is it? Is it closer or stepping back? Is it in front of, in front of, or behind? And we can think of it rounder, we can think of it square. I like square in the beginning because then I can just apply values to all the left facing side planes, say, and so on. Okay, so I think we'll stop there.